Hello, uh, Matt Osborne here again. I've got an exciting video hopefully today to my favourite cameras ever made. My previous favourite, the Leica M3, which is a 1954 camera release, age of camera, 1950s. And then a camera discovered kind of accidentally more recently the Leica 3A. Now this is a 1930s camera, this particular one from 1939. So I'm going to compare kind of some of the main features but features and differences between the Leica 3, Leica 2 and Leica 1 star cameras. This is the Leica M camera because the Leica M was released after the Leica 3A. You may find it's better in many respects but the Leica 3A does have some advantages, which is why I'm really excited to have kind of found it and discovered it. So let's go through some of the features. If I close both the lenses up as tight as they'll go, the first thing you'll notice is the size. Now both of these cameras are currently fitted with a 50mm lens. This is a 50mm 1.4 Similux. This is a 50mm 3.5 LMR. Now, if you want a small camera to travel, kind of, I try and hold them upside down, to carry with you all day, would you rather carry this or this? As a cyclist and a runner and wanting to travel light, when I just saw the weight of this camera and the size of this lens, I was kind of already completely sold. This is even smaller than my Leica CL, making it small. And it's full frame, obviously being film, but it's full frame film the same as the Leica M3 or a modern Leica film camera. So why would you want to buy the an older Leica 3A versus a more modern Leica M camera, whether it's a Leica M3, Leica M6 and so on. The, the boat they have similar characteristics. So let's go through and turn some of the features. So on the top plate you'll see that both of these cameras have a top shutter speed of 1 over 1,000th and a minimum shutter speed of one second or ball mode. Both cameras have a cold shoe. Both cameras have the rewind knob on the, on the left hand side. Both cameras have the same bottom plate design with the removable spool. There is a slight difference I'll show you um, later on. On the back of the camera the difference with the M cameras is the back opens up making it much easier to load film. With the older like three cameras the back doesn't open so you're having to do all the loading from the the bottom only let's i'll show you some more differences one is weight this is a lot lighter i've done a spec sheet so i'll include that at the end of the video I'm comparing like m3 versus like a 3a a lot of the features such as weight just to speed things like this so how does a like a three differ this is made in the 1930s you'll notice from the top if you can see that it is a similar layout, but the main difference is on the back of the camera. Now, if you've used Leica's before, you will know that you look and see one viewfinder window. Now, this window doubles as both a viewfinder and a rangefinder, meaning you're using it for composing your photo and also for focusing your photo. The difference with the Leica 3 camera is it has two windows. One window is a viewfinder, meaning for composition, which is the middle window. And one window is a rangefinder, which is for focusing your photo. So you need to look through the left window first to focus your picture. And then you need to move your eye from the left to this to the right window to compose before taking the shot. This can make it a lot slower in practice, especially for me if you do model photography and you want to work quickly, this definitely does slow you down a little bit. But you wouldn't necessarily want to use this for model photography. The like M camera with the big bright viewfinder is probably much better suited to this type of work if you have the choice of both cameras. What other differences are there? One great feature on the Leica 3 is the it's got a diopter built in on the on this side, and as you lift it up, you can adjust the focus through the rangefinder to get it exactly right for your vision. Now I'm short-sighted, so this is brilliant for me because I can adjust it and um, it brings the image super sharp uh, where I wouldn't necessarily have that with a Leica M camera because you don't have that feature. 
another feature on this camera, the on an M, the Urine-wide lever is on the front. On the like 3A, the Rewind lever is on the top. So that's one difference, that would normally be there. Another difference you may notice is an extra button here, and you might wonder what this is for. Now, this film loaded in this camera at the moment, so I can't show you exactly. But one rule you have to remember is you have to re um, advance the film first by turning this one. And then once you've advanced the film, then you can set your shutter speed. You're not supposed to do it the other way around or you can break a pin, I think, in the camera. So going back to what is this button, on the top of the camera you only have shutter speeds from the twentieth of a second to one thousandth of a second. If you want to use the uh, sh slower shutter speed than one over twenty, you need to set it to one dash twenty on the top and then change your lower shutter speed on the front such as half a second, quarter of a second, eighth, twentieth and so on. So this button only functions when the top button is set to one over twenty. Um, in terms of flash sync speed, the Leica M3 has the ports on the back, so with an adapter you can fire flash with the Leica M3, but you need the adapter because it's not a standard PC socket. This is a cold shoot on both cameras, meaning you cannot attach a speed light and it's not, it will work, it won't work. Um, the difference with a Leica M3 is it will sync with flash at 50, 1 over 50. With the older Leica 3A it won't sync with flash. Uh, flash wasn't really around in the 1930s, uh, such as speed lights. It was the, the older style of lighting. So this, like a 3A, won't work with flash. There's no sinks sockets, so, and there's no hot shoots in your cold shoot, so there's no way, way, no way of connecting the flash to the camera itself. In terms of other features, on the base of the camera, it is the same as the M3, with the removable film insert on one side. The only difference being you need to cut a section out of the film to load. You can't load film straight out of the film box. <clears throat> you need to cut an extra section out to make the film leader longer before you load it. Uh, there's a diagram on the base of the camera. So what I'll do is when I, I'll do a separate how to load a Leica 3 video and then I'll display this and show you clearly how you need to do this. So other differences between the two cameras, like M cameras have bayonet fit, like an M mount as they call it, lenses like so. Whereas like a three, let's explain this. This is such an amazing lens. This is the like a LMR fit 50mm f3.5. That's a slow lens, but I just wanted the, small, the smallest lens possible so when I'm cycling I can put it in my jersey pocket and it's super light and super compact. So this is a collapsible LMR 3.5. There's also an LMR 2.8 which I also have but it's slightly bigger. So amazing lens. If you're going to look at one of these older Leicas I'd seriously recommend one of these if you don't need the, the fastest shutter speeds, uh, fast, if you don't need the fast aperture, this slower LMI is a fantastic lens. So this lens is called like a thread mount or like a screw mount. It's also can be known as an M39. You can attach this to the any like M camera. You just need the like M to like a LTM adapter. Film rewind knob, that's a film rewind kind of clutch or you have to press this first. Uh, one, how would I say, tip. I've had this camera maybe a week and one thing I've noticed is you need to make sure you rewind the film, you're going to advance, move the lever to the hard position. But you need to remember when you load the film you need to move it back to the normal, uh, the A position. Otherwise the film doesn't engage. I'm um, talking from experience. These cameras are more difficult to load than the M camera. I've shot, I think, five rolls, four rolls of film now in like a three cameras, and today, including today, today I'm like, oh yeah, I've got this. Don't need to do any checks, just load it up for it, ready to go. 
model arrived, I was like, quick, put the film in, let's go. I was shooting two Leica 3 cameras and the Leica CL. And I kept firing it. I was just trying to get more test shots. So I was firing probably faster than I would normally with film. Winding it on, shooting away, winding it on, shooting away. And the time was going and I'm starting to get a little bit concerned and I'm thinking, the film should have finished by now. And you kind of your heart sinks. You're, you're already thinking back to like those amazing images you, you visioned and you kind of saw as the light was hitting the hair and everything. And then it still hadn't finished when we got back to the house. It, it got dark. And I'm like, crap, I, I think this isn't loaded properly. And it's such a schoolboy error. It's like, if you load film into an M camera, the first thing you do is when you advance the film, look for this arrow turning. If the arrow's turning, the film's loaded. I didn't do this day, this check today because I was rushing. And then in the moment I was juggling three cameras like I normally do. I tell myself I should use one, but I was always interested to do different things. So I was using two, three, two like a three cameras. So I wasn't really looking at the the arrow reversing. And it turns out the, the film hadn't engaged. And so I probably shot 50 photos because it wasn't loaded and I've not got anything to show for it. It's a lesson to be learned, but luckily for me as a hybrid shooter, I've got them all on digital. It was darkish, so the results may have not been the best error, best ever. And I'll, um, equally I was using another Leica 3 camera, so there will be some photos on that. And that did engage and that did finish, so I have definitely got something. So. Thank you, uh, thank goodness for that. So to finish off, like M3 versus like a 3A, why would you use each camera? Do you need both cameras? The like M has a much better viewfinder, combined viewfinder, range finder. This camera is much more practical. It's much faster to use. It's much easier to focus and compose quickly and it's easier to load film because the back door opens. So for most situations, if you don't care about size and you money's not an issue, I'd recommend buying yourself an M camera. It doesn't need to be an M3. M3 is, I think, the best. Some people prefer the M2 because of the 35mm frame lines. I'll link above the M3 versus M2 video if you've not seen it. But those are normally thought of as some of the best M cameras. So if you want one like a camera to do everything, I'd recommend the like M camera. And if you need faster lenses, one point, if you want 1.4, that's not true. If you want modern lenses, such as this Summerlux, you need the like M camera because modern lenses are not going to fit the like a 3A because it's a different mounting. The bayonet fit will not fit the thread mount but the thread mount will fit the bayonet fit. So if you prefer the look of modern lenses, or let's for example say you've got a like a M240 and you're kind of getting the um, the idea that you'd like to try some shooting with film, buy an M film camera, don't buy a vintage film camera to start with because then you can use all your existing lenses on the film body. So that's why you buy an M camera. And I think the M3 is the best because of the magnified um, viewfinder. So if I've already got the best, what I think is the best Leica, why did I buy the Leica 3A? It's a good question. But then if I just shut my mouth for a minute and you look, that tells you the answer straight away. It's the size. I bought the Leica 3A because of the size, 100%. But it wasn't that simple. I bought the Leica 3A because I wanted to buy a vintage Leica lens. And when I looked at the price of the vintage Leica lens, it was almost as cheap, maybe £100 more, to buy the le a vintage lens with a Leica vintage camera attached. So I had no wish to buy another Leica camera. I've got a few already, as you may have seen in my previous videos. And there are more videos to come when I get time. Um, I never even considered these cameras in all, of, all my 10 years of photography and all my blogging of like everything. It didn't cross my mind once. 
when I looked on eBay at buying the vintage lens and I saw that the price of the Leica 3, the Leica 2 and the Leica 1 cameras are only marginally more expensive than the lenses that they come with. For me it was a no-brainer. I like testing cameras, I like playing with old cameras. So I didn't really give it much thought. I just It was like an extra £100 I think. So I was like, right, brilliant. I'll buy it and Mr Leica can have another Leica to play with. So, and equally, a camera this old can hold its value, so I'll be able to sell it tomorrow for £100. So it really isn't a risk financially. Um, I see it more as an investment. So why would I buy a Leica 3? As I say, I'd buy a Leica 3 for the size. If you're not a portrait photographer, if you're, say, a travel photographer, or maybe street photographer, or street photographer, I'll come on to in a minute. If you're doing, if you're using lands, if you're using a Leica to take slow photos that don't need fast um, setup times and fast operating, if you're using a Leica camera, where you like using vintage lenses, if you like small compact Leicas like me, so you can carry around all day in your jacket pocket, you may really like the Leica one, two, or three. I'll do another video because there's so much detail I can share. I've, I've written it, 99% of it, but I need to make the video to go with it. So there are different vintage Leicas, that obviously. Um, this one's kind of mid-range, 1930s is not the very earliest, but the earliest, one of the earliest Leica 3 cameras. Um, there's Leica 3 A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then after the G, the, the 3 series was finished. And then by that point, the M series had taken over. One huge advantage of the, the older Leica cameras is the size. If you're one of these people who always dreamt of having a Leica, and you'll think, oh, it's too expensive, like everybody says. And so you go out and buy, I don't know, a £300 Canon film camera um, with lens or without lens. For £300, you can buy a Leica with lens. Uh, maybe you love Canon, maybe you hate Leica. And so in that case, you'll be happy with a Canon. But I'd say for most normal people, being able to own a camera of this quality, built like a... Swiss watch, it's absolutely beautifully made. I've had almost as much fun photographing the camera as I have of using the camera. You can buy these, the camera it's body itself for maybe less than 200 pounds, which is crazy, crazy when you think. I mean, it's an old camera, but they still, if you get one like me that's says CLA'd or still working and it looks in good condition, this is gonna last me, this will last longer than me. And hopefully I'll last a little bit longer. But for the such small money, when you think how stupid expensive these modern lenses are, I didn't pay full price for this. But you can pay like two thousand to five thousand to eight thousand pounds for one Leica lens. Yet you can pick up an old Leica with lens for maybe three, two to three hundred pounds. Um, you can pay more. You can pay less depending on the quality. Some lenses may have fog or fogging or hazing. They may have dust particles inside or fungus. But if you look around, you can get a bargain. I was very lucky. I purchased a few different bits recently and they've all been fantastic. So if you buy carefully, read the descriptions on, say, eBay or look at the pictures or go into a collector's old like vintage antique shop and look at the camera in your hand before you buy it. Check the shutter speed on the older film cameras. The, shutter, the slower shutter speeds may be inaccurate in terms of they may be slower than what they say so it's worth checking that the shutter is accurate this one had been tested before I bought it but for 300 pounds of the lens this is amazing and then you can use this lens via an adapter on a digital Leica or if say you're a Sony shooter or a Fuji shooter or any mirrorless camera shooter you just buy a cheaper adapter from eBay and then you can use these vintage lenses on the modern digital camera, any camera, pretty much any camera, even micro four thirds. I can use it on my Lumix GH5, what I'm recording on at the moment. The lens is alone. The camera itself is just a box. It's a very pretty box, but it's just a box to mount your lens on. There are less like a thread mount lenses made. 
than there are like at M-mount lenses. But you can get non like a branded lenses to fit the thread mounts. So some people use the Canon, I, think, I believe it's Canon 50mm f1.2 lens, like a thread mount onto these style of cameras. Um, personally, I'm happy with the small Leica lenses, but that is an option if you need something faster. Um, you can get f1.5 Summerit, you can get the f2 Summitar, I have to think. You can get the f2.8 Elmar, you can get the f3.5 Elmar, these are all 50mm. You can get the 35mm f3.5 Summeron. I've got that in like an M, but not in thread mount. One thing I forgot to mention, the Leica M camera is said to have the limitation that it's only got 50mm, 90mm, 135mm frame lines, meaning you cannot use this for anything wider than 50mm. The same is true, but even more so with a Leica 3. The Leica 3 has 50mm frame frame or 50mm viewfinder and that's it. So if you shoot 35mm you won't be able to compose, if you shoot 90mm you won't be able to compose, if you shoot anything except 50mm you won't be able to compose unless you use a hot shoe viewfinder. I'll cover this in my next video because this will be too long otherwise. So both cameras are designed to shoot 50mm lenses particularly. Both cameras have shutter speeds of 1 to 1,000th. Both cameras are like full frame 35mm film cameras. Both cameras are bottom loading with the removable film spool. Both have the film rewind knob on the top. This is much faster and has a much, much bigger viewfinder, rangefinder window. This is much slower to use because of the separate windows. But for slower pace photography, it's fantastic because of the size and it's much cheaper. So I think I've covered everything I can think of. I'll include a summary of the bullet points I've gone through and anything I've forgotten at the end of this article, at the end of this vlog. And then um, you'll be able to screenshot it if you're interested in looking to buy one of these cameras. Um, as I say, prices can be anything from under £200 to maybe three to four hundred, sometimes with lens, sometimes without lens. The common lens to get on the Leica 3A, which I have, is the... Um, I got this lens because this is even smaller, so this is my kind of go-to now setup for cycling, running, things like this. So I hope you found that useful, and I'll do a separate video of how to load these cameras. And there's so many variations, there's black dial versions, red dial versions, because they are continually being um, updated as, as time progressed between 1930 and 1950. So there's so many variations but I'll try and include many of the popular ones. I did a huge amount of reading before buying this so I can just basically share what I've already learned. It was a steep learning curve. I thought I knew quite a bit about Leicas and then I realised I didn't know anything about the older Leicas. So now I'm a bit slightly more clued up. So yeah, thanks for watching and amazing camera. Oh, you're still here. Um, as you're still uh, still with me, I left you into a little secret. Like a three A. Like a three G. This is thought of as the best of the best. Like a three cameras. This is the last version made before the like a three cameras were discontinued. This is kind of the, the Ducati of bikes or the, I don't know, Ferrari of cars. This was the, the best version before they were scrapped. And as such, the price is two to three times more than a Leica 3A, but they do hold the value. Um, one pop triv one trivia question for you. If you have three cameras, right, excuse me, I'm handling them badly. Which of these cameras was first made? Which of these cameras was last made? Okay, what's your bets? Any guesses? 
I've already told you if you're listening in this video, the Leica 3A was released in the 1930s and this one is from 1939. So this was the first camera of these three cameras kind of released. Now, who's a Leica buff? Who knows their Leicas? Which of these two cameras was released first? The Leica M3 or the Leica 3G? Any guesses? Kent or Kent 3? Okay, now surprisingly, the Leica M3 was released before the Leica 3G. This may surprise you. The Leica 3, think of it maybe as the Leica M lineup, and then say the Leica SL lineup. So they're running them parallel. They had the Leica M series that started sooner, and then they released the Leica SL series, and then they're running parallel, which they're currently doing at the moment, SL, SL2. The Leica 3s had come from the Leica 1, the Leica 2, the Leica 3, A, B, C, D, E, F. And then they got the Leica F in the 1950s, and then they released the Leica M camera because they wanted a better combined viewfinder. The Leica M3 was released in 1954, I believe, around like mid-1950s. The Leica 3 series was still going at this time. This Leica 3G, I believe, was released around 1959, 1957 to 1959. So this was released after the Leica M. Now, because of this, less of these cameras were sold because everybody had already moved over to the the new style of Leica M camera, easier to focus, easier to load, new style of lenses. Anyway, if you think of it today, everyone wants them, the newest thing now, now, now. So this didn't sell very well. So as such, less were made. And so now the resale value is much higher. As I say, two to three times more than a Leica 3A or Leica A2F. They're usually maybe half the price of the Leica 3G. What's the difference between a Leica 3G and a Leica 3A? Let me show you. 